Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, last uh, session of uh, this year's uh, camp. Today, uh, as you know, we will have an uh, interesting presentation, I think, from uh, Miko Coxlin and uh, Akito Watabe will also join us. They will speak about uh, Top at its uh, life. And you also saw Miko in the physical session one hour ago. Miko, you have seven World Cup victories, right? And five World Cup medals, I think. And now uh, you are, we are happy to have you here in Lillehammer and also close to our projects in the Legacy Center. So, uh, yeah, how should you sum up the session earlier today, Miko? I think it was a good session. It's a session, at least, uh, I told that I'm used to having or used to have uh, during my career. Uh, I think it's a session that um, is important. I mentioned it's not so so easy to yeah to put measurements on how the session actually works. But uh, I think for sure, like Anna said, that you you are able to get more more movements uh, like you want to have in the jumping hill and. Um, also, it's I think it's good for the the core strength and that you're able to tolerate all the other amounts of training as well. Uh, so, um, and I I find those kind of sessions really fun. Um, they can be challenging, you know, but I um, I remember those sessions as uh, being really fun sessions. And you can also yeah do more extreme variety, so then it gets more fun. But uh, for a basic first uh, session, I think uh, it was a good session, and I hope the, all the girls uh, who watched uh, found it interesting um, and can maybe implement uh, those sessions in their everyday um, training. Sure. I think it also was an excellent uh, session. and. Uh, I think also today the good news we got big screen I think so also the recording should be easy to follow we will uh, upload it on uh, YouTube soon and send you the link so you can also find this session uh, yeah when you are doing your daily training to get uh, to see the, the workout again and uh, looks like we also uh, got uh, yeah some different setups here to see nice pictures from the session today from uh, from uh, all over Europe. So that's cool to see Miko that uh, somebody was uh, following us also, I think. <laughs> so uh, we will come back to, of course, uh, back to the, the photo competition in the end also today and also announced the winner of the, the big prize, the free the free spot for the camp next year. But um, first I think I give the floor to Miko, who will uh, yeah, have his uh, presentation. And also soon uh, we'll see Akito show up, I think. But uh, first, uh, go ahead, Miko. Yeah, thank you. This will be... Uh my first time having a talk on the on the screen a bit strange for sure uh, but i will do my best um first of all i want to say um it's really fun to see the development of uh, nordic combined women's it's um yeah i've been following it and i was in um yeah i have seen the youth caps uh, from the start and also seen how all the all the girls have developed uh, so it's really impressive to see how big steps everybody is taking and i i really look forward to um, to see to see how uh, and the development will continue so today i will uh, talk a little bit about um about reaching uh, your potential um, both as an athlete and um, as a person. I will um, yeah, 
point out some factors and talk a little bit about key factors that I have found to be really important for my career um, and uh, for uh, yeah for my success I would say <laughs> I'm uh, I'm happy with the uh, with the res the results I had in during my career but also on many other aspects I'm happy with uh, what I have um, made out of the my career in sports um, I think um, I want to start uh, it's been two and a half years soon since our since I quit so a, a small bragging video I think it's in place. Uh, it's uh, it will show the probably one of my first jumps when I was about three years old. And since we are in Lillehammer, it's uh, some small clips from my my two victories here in Lillehammer. Actually, it was my first and and last victory in the World Cup. So you can have a look. Och vi har Mikko Koxlien från från Söderåll. Hans far är Ola Koxlien är en leder. Hans mor är ju från Lahti och han hade 119 och en halv meter i prövhoppe. Och förhållandena är inte så gärna. Och Koxlien Ja, glimrende hoppa Kokslin. Har vi fått fram en ny kombinerstjärne nå? Han var ju nummer 2 och nummer 9 i Kosamo och kommer långt ner i backen 130 meter och tre gånger ratten. Ja, detta är ett vidunderlig utgångspunkt för Kokslin. Ja, det är bra han genomför ett ordentligt hopp syns jag och får lite han trek emot det gör men det är så lite att det skulle bara mangla och så gör den ett gott utgångspunkt för henne. Det är glimrende. Han, han svarer på dette, Mikko Kongsling. Dobbelt hans hele veien på risene. Se hvordan tyskeren flyr. Det er enormt han trøkker til med henne. Kongsling har kontakt. Det er verre for Moas, men nå kommer han. Kongsling i stor fart og opp på siden. I denne 100 meter igjen går på seier på hjemmebane nå. Mikko Kongsling har kjempe fart. Han har teknikken. Han har teten. 50 meter. Dette målet på veien for Mikko Kongsling hjemme på Lillehammer. Vinner Mikko. Herlig. Fra 38. plass til seier for et langere. Ja. Men things change. Today I was uh, measuring the Schritt measurement on the top of the hill for the Norwegian uh, Championships a big hill. So uh, but it was fun to see all the... Today two girls also attended and um, all the boys. Um, yeah. The... Two uh, victories or clips from my two victories you saw there was two of my seven, as uh, Peter Erik mentioned, uh, and from 159 starts, uh, I was uh, lucky enough or uh, good enough to win seven. So a little bit about what I'm going to talk about also is that um, it's not only uh, the results uh, that I can take from my career, I for sure had a lot of, um, yeah, motgang. Uh, <laughs> uh, for sure, a lot of downs, ups and downs during my career. Um, but I want today to talk about um, the key factors for um, for me, yeah, to, uh, reaching my potential that I feel that I finally did after many years. I will um, skip this part. Uh, I can say that um, I was telling you a little bit about it uh, earlier in the session, but I started to work for Olympia Toppen in Lanne, which, which is the region here uh, around Lillehammer. I started working there uh, in 2019. Uh, so I've been working soon one and a half years. I really enjoy the the job, and I 
today I work with many different sports. Not, it's not only Nordic and Bind, it's also ski jumping, cross country skiers, ice hockey players. So it's a challenging job. I uh, also work uh, quite a bit with, uh, with para athletes, which is um, great fun. Um, so I have a variated uh, day um, now. And um, yeah, it's been a good transition for me uh, from my, my career. But now in the beginning, um, I will actually start with uh, taking a break. As I mentioned, I will tell you a little bit about what I was um, uh, feeling or I feel that it was the most important things um, or factors uh, for my success. And um, I would like you, uh, all of you who are listening and watching to take one or two minutes now and feel free to write uh, in the in the chat what your uh, what yeah your answers to the questions that you you read here um, what do you think is uh, the most important factors for your success in Nordic combined so I will uh, put myself on mute for a couple of minutes and uh, please write in the chat um, chat what do you what do you think? And then uh, there is no right or wrong answers. I will tell you then later a little bit about what I what I have experienced. So a small break in the start. Yeah, is uh, writing inner motivation, having fun, and listen to your body. Good answers there. Anybody else having some thoughts around the, what's important for your, reaching your potential in the Nordic combined? Hello, Paulo. I see many known names in the meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Jed. Any more from the athletes? Oi. Oh, yeah. Being patient, curious, and enjoy. Good answers. I think I um, I will move on. Um, uh, we have haven't got that much time. Good training, yes, always always important. Um, I will start um, with. Um, with that, what I feel, at least for me, and remember this is my own experiences, it might be different for, for you, but um, for me, I think the most important factor in my career was patience and long-term view. Um, 
I would say I had a long-term view about the sport since I was a kid. I was um, having a dream goal of becoming the world best Nordic combined athlete. I think from ever since I was 11. I have actually a newspaper article from, I think I was 12 years old, that I will be a Nordic combined athlete. But still, I was doing a lot of different sports. I played football. Um, I played uh, ice hockey a little bit, track and field. So I did a lot of different sports until I started um, um, high school or uh, NTG, Norwegian yeah, top sport high school. Um, uh, but I, I mentioned that I had a lot of, you can call downsides uh, in my career. And I think that uh, that dream or that patient, patience uh, was helping me, kind of pushing me onwards in my career. Um, I was somewhat, you can call a, a child star. Uh, I was pretty much winning all the cross country races, all the ski jumping competitions, and naturally Nordic combined competitions. I attended uh, probably until I was 14 or 15. Uh, but I think, uh, um, yeah. So when I was 14, 15, it started to go downwards. Um, I was not having the same success. I was uh, I was not winning competitions anymore. Um, and then I think it was really important for me to have that uh, long-term view of, of, about where I wanted to go um, with the sport. Um, if I didn't have that patience, I'm pretty sure I would have quit way before I have reached uh, 25. Um, I actually, the first video you saw there, I was 25 years old. So without the patience um, and long-term view, I don't think I have had the, yeah. I don't think I would have the motivation to continue because I had a, a picture of where I wanted to go and uh, I followed that dream uh, all the time. Uh, so whenever I was feeling down, I said to myself, okay, I would know where I want to go and it was easier for me than to motivate myself. Um, yeah. So what I want to say to you is that uh, you all have a good time or you have you have good time to reach your potential. Many of you are young, many of you are maybe a bit older, but still I was 25 when I had my breakthrough. And um, I think uh, if all of you have that patience and have that motivation, um, it, uh, I don't think you should be, be stressed with having results too early. Um, you're in the beginning uh, on the road, sort of, to reach your potential. So, uh, and the dream goal was kind of helping me um, not being stressed about reaching uh, that goal because uh, I was confident that uh, someday I will get there. Um, but I did not have my breakthrough until I was uh, 25. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, one of the main reasons uh, for me not, uh, because I think I had the talent to be um, having better results earlier, but I had this, um, I don't know what, I can call it a demon maybe, <laughs> but uh, I was really result orientated. Uh, I had, so, in some way, that dream also kind of uh, made me result or orientated, um, which I think also led to me not reaching that potential earlier. Um, but I, I had that. I was thinking only about results. Um, I defined my development um, and also myself as a person uh, from results, and. Um, 
I think that was one of the biggest reasons that uh, my development as a Nordic combined athlete uh, was having a pretty much standstill since I was yeah, 17 to 24, maybe. Um, I um, I tried really hard <laughs> to to get good results, and uh, I I'm pretty sure I tried too hard. Um, and especially in competitions, this came very much to play. So I would maybe do well in training, and then in competitions, I underachieved almost all the time, which I did after having my first uh, victory as well. But uh, I remember Einar and Jens yesterday uh, talked about um, focusing on the, on what you what you want to do or what your tasks are. Um, I pretty much focused on how was how how far I was going to jump, which uh, was uh, not the best. Um, and I used a lot of energy, um, a lot. I was nervous. I was I was trying to do everything perfect. Um, um, yeah, and I was I was tired as hell when I was supposed to jump. So, uh, and it was no fun. Uh, I traveled around the world, uh, stressed, not having fun, um, being disappointed almost every weekend. Um, yeah, which, yeah, I, I, I said to myself after Vancouver Olympics that uh, I was in the Olympics, so I was having some sort of uh, development for sure, but um, not what I was hoping for and not what I I think I had the talent for so but in Vancouver I said to myself this is not how I want this to be so I um I pretty much yeah I took three weeks trip to Bali in Indonesia um rethinking what I want to do with my sports if I want to do this um uh, and it soon came to me that I want to do it but I have to do it on, do it on um yeah, I have to do it by having fun. Um, I uh, want to enjoy uh, Nordic Combined. I got a totally different view about the sport. I I try to. I went from result orientated to performance orientated. I enjoyed every step, and I was focusing on even in competition. I was focusing on how I can develop myself. And then the first competition in Kusamo. I was second, and then the second competition in Lillehammer, I was winning. And so me switching from a result-orientated mindset to performance-orientated mindset was one of the key factors, I think, for me to starting to having good results. Um, I remember in Lahti in 2017, um, before the team competition, I was really nervous right before I was going to jump. I was all, almost losing myself, but uh, I wasn't stressing. I wasn't nervous warming up or the day before. So I had energy to handle that stress when I was on the top in the in the hill in Lahti. So I, I did a pretty good job uh, jump. Had that been in 2009, before I kind of made this uh, change, I would definitely have jumped 20 meters shorter, uh, I can guarantee. So uh, because I was using so much energy before in all competitions before Vancouver, that yeah, I didn't have the I didn't have the the energy to to focus on the right things. Then, uh, also, I want to show you this, the secret behind Norway's Winter Olympic success. success. So everybody pay attention. Uh, here's some uh, good tips from the chief of top sport in Norway. Winning by focusing on not winning. That's the secret. <laughs> now, we want, we want, he says, we want that to, to be in sports because they want to be. And, um, uh, the focus is on other aspects, not on the competitive side. 
So it's a reminder also, this is the chief of top sport in Norway, explaining the Pyeongchang success. Last thing I want to talk about is um, balance in sport and everyday life. Um, I have always been kind of um, uptat, yeah, occupied by or yeah, focusing on um, on my own well-being. Like, what can I do to feel good about myself and um, be in a good state of mind? Um, I just want to show you fast how I was thinking before Vancouver Olympics. If you put, uh, like, as an athlete, you have this. Uh, you have different aspects in life. This is a kind of simple version. We have family, maybe work, school, oh, curling. Oh, <laughs> wrong slide. <laughs> but Nordic combined um, and friends. Um, in 2009, I will say my priorities looked somewhat like this. And this is very different from person to person. Uh, I know athletes who probably have 98% sport, and that works for them. Um, this was probably too much sport for me, because in 2011, my priorities pretty much looked like this. Um, I was doing the same amount of training. I was training seriously. I was doing maybe more hours of training, but I had a different mindset. And I took also much more time with family, friends. I started to study again. And my results uh, got a lot better. So as um, I had the second overall in 2010-11 and third overall, 12, no, 11-12. Um, but I was getting much more better on switching on and off uh, sports. Oh. And this was right for me as who I am. And uh, I think it's important that you athletes reflect on what's important for you. This is not a, a correct or perfect way to do it, but it was the correct way for me to do it. So I think everybody could and maybe should reflect a little bit about what their values are and what how to prioritize those values. Um, yeah. And um, in the end, I just want to say that, uh, you know, sports, um, um, it's a, about a lot more than just uh, winning medals. Um, in the beginning, you saw some highlights of my career, but I think uh, the real highlights are all the friends I made, all the friendships um, all around the world, all my teammates in, um, in uh, Norway. It was really good. I have many of them I haven't seen now in a while, and like today, it feels like home, even if I'm on the top measuring the Schritt, <laughs> or yeah, uh, Schritt is probably a German word, I don't know, <laughs> that's what uh, we call it, yeah. Um, but I have uh, had the privilege to live my dream um, my whole life, and I have a lot of fantastic memories, and um, yeah, I will, uh, and one of, uh, one of the privileges I have had is to uh, meet with um, my comp uh, competitors and also friends. And uh, waking up in the middle of the night from Japan is one uh, of, uh, of my good friends, um, Akito Watabe. So, um, Akito, are you, uh, are you, uh, in, uh, are you awake? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Do you have your video, Akito? Yeah. 
I see him. It's, 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 uh, is it on? Yeah, it's on for me. So yeah. okay, okay, good. I can see you. But that's good. How was? Uh, have you slept a bit before waking up? Yeah, I had a three hours sleep and I wake wake up and ha had a cup of coffee for for this meeting. Okay. But but already a, a bit sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, thank you very much, Akito, for uh, joining us. Thank on, you um, on the session. Thank you too. Yeah. Um, I talked a little bit about um, my uh, yeah the key factors for uh, let's say my success, uh, both as an athlete, but I think also as a person. Uh, didn't talk maybe that much about it, but. Also after Vancouver, I was feeling I was getting a lot more uh, impressions and getting closer to, for example, you, uh, by me being more maybe relaxed in the, um, in the way, um, yeah, I was getting a lot more out of sports, I think, being able to talk much more to other people. Uh, but what, what, if you start with maybe, or what kind of factors do you think has been important for your success? Which result-wise is way better than mine. You have uh, had, uh, was it, it was eight um, podiums, World Cup overall in a row? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, first place uh, overall? In uh, yeah, one once and seventeen eighteen. Yeah. What do you think has been important for uh, you being so stable in the top of Nordic Combine for so many years? I think um, important things, important factor is uh, um, enjoy the present moment. Mm -hmm. One one is the enjoy the present moment. Yeah. And one one more is uh, having beginner's mind. Uh, it's it's kind of curious. Yeah. 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 First, I want to talk about enjoy the present moment. Yeah. And a pre present moment is uh, really important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, we are. Yeah, especially Japanese are traveling quite a lot mm. in a year and a lot of days far from the home mm. and it's quite hard and yeah. but um, I'm always enjoying the the traveling around the world and enjoying to to join the other cultures and meet other people and meet some uh, eat some different food and see some different views and always enjoying enjoying not only training and uh com competing enjoying the days and, and uh yeah, I think uh, present moment is uh, quite important. It uh, means uh, like uh, when you when you when you have uh, some good result, like winning race or had a good performance, is uh, already I realized that when i realize that it's already things the past yeah and the pa the past is uh disturbing you to to improve yourself mm. if if you think too much about the, the past mm. and yeah i am i now but it's a different man mm. Uh, comparing with the, the past and mm. future also uh, if I 
think about too much the future. Like I want to 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 win the race or to want want to have some good result or something. It's uh, but nobody knows that more. Nobody knows tomorrow, and it's uh, no, it's it's not important to think about the future. Always uh, the pre always focus on the present moment and enjoy it. It's a uh, really important factor yeah. to 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 be to be good. Mm. Yeah, I, I really interesting to hear. Uh, we might have talked about this before as well, but um, now it came to mind that uh, this was probably um, yeah. What uh, what you are explaining now is probably the opposite of what I was feeling, mm -hmm. at least before uh, Vancouver Olympics. Yeah. Always thinking about the race, uh, what was going to happen. Uh, and also after the race, <laughs> thinking about how shit mm. the race was or the jump, or um, I think it's really interesting reflections you have. And I will also like to say to all the other athletes or coaches who are listening, please uh, raise your hand if you want to talk or ask questions or write in the chat. chat. <laughs> Uh, okay, Akito, what um, present moment was one? Yeah. Had, had, uh, ha, had this changed at all during your career? Or, uh, or have you had this mindset all from you were a kid? Or what, how can, or, and how did you come into that kind of? Uh... Um, I, I changed my mind after I had the one car accident when I was 21 years old um, it's it's it was summer season before uh, 2008 and 9 and I was uh, going to hiking on the mountain by car with my friends two friends and uh, hike up mountain and come back and we were a bit tired and then I was uh, sitting on the coal, coal seat coal pilot seat and one of my friend was driving and one was uh, seat be behind and uh, we were drive down from the mountain mid middle of the mountain and then we were driving the road and then there is one snake there, and we were uh how can i say uh yeah yeah uh, then we were see we all see back and we step uh snake or not and then car was uh fall down from the side of the road and then our car is uh, roaring down 150 mid meter and it was horrible crash and car was totally crashed mm. and I was only I was on the car that time and uh, other two were out when 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 on the way to the to the bottom <laughs> and uh only my space was arrived and then our, others were crashed yeah. and then yeah it was a uh, bad memory but mm. i realized that uh our human life is uh nobody knows when when you are die mm. maybe one second later or one minute later one day and <clears throat> that time i realized i must enjoy it or my, i must living the present moment mm. 
the past is past mm. and I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. Then, then I changed the mindset like mm. that mm. after that car accident. Mm. Then, then my performance is really going up and then I was, uh, I, I was able to join the member of the championships 2009 in Liberates and then we, we got the gold medal in, in the team event. Yeah. We wanted that gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Magnus was uh, the last, last one. And yeah. No, our, was... our skis are better than yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But... No, you yeah. did a really good performance for sure. Um, really interesting to hear, Akito. Um, is there any other aspects that you think um, has been or is important for yeah for your um, for your career? Uh, second one. Yeah. Yeah. Beginner's mind. Yeah. It's a, it's a word of, kind one one kind of word of Zen. Zen mind, and uh, yeah, it's it's quite similar as the present moment. So, uh, uh, always having a curious about about yourself. It's uh. How can I say? Uh, it's it's quite difficult to to explain it. Um, yeah, the past is past, and always um, beginners are have having a quite big curious about uh, things when you. When you start ski jumping, like for example, uh, how you how you jump, where you should think about where you can jump, or how you jump, how you train, how what is this, this what is this, what is this, and and but when you growing up and getting better athlete or some something you have when you have when you get experience then you everyone forget the beginner's mind the beginner's mind is really important to to learn from others and studies and it's really really important mindset to to improve yourself and study yourself knowing yourself and yeah it's kind of uh yeah it's kind of mindset yeah. and then that is uh uh yeah it's yeah. uh key yeah it's i think it's key fact to change yourself yeah i also look here at marta gida mari and hanna was also saying uh, curious yeah and uh for what's important for them and also yeah jed is saying eager to learn um i totally agree uh, on what you're saying and uh, from my side maybe not so f uh, f philosophical but like uh, wanting to look at other athletes maybe take out what they do the best and uh, always trying to find ways to improve yourself What also some I think important for my career. Mm. I had a I had a good uh, uh, I have a good good story from Jason Lamy Chapuis. In two thousand ten eleven, I was starting to jump later mm. uh, in the competition, and then I I used to study Jason because I so, thought he was so calm and like a joke on the top before jumping. And I was looking at him, trying to do, like, be more like him uh, before jumping. 
And then I remember in Holman Colum, we had the party after the season when he came to me and asked me how, how, how is it possible that you are so calm and so <laughs> relaxed on the top? <laughs> and I, well, uh, it's thanks to you because I have seen what, how you are doing and tried to implement that into my, <laughs> to my, to my own uh, routines. So then, uh, yeah. Any other things you want to add, Akito? Yeah, I think um, if you, yeah, it's it's. I want to talk about the curious. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm. I think uh, the ideas, ideas to improve yourself is uh, everywhere, mm. and then not only uh learn from good athlete or just uh learn uh study about sports science or uh think about uh, the uh <laughs> think about the sports yeah, yeah and yeah. yeah learn from uh, you can learn from everything it's a uh, it's an important mindset of the beginner's mind yeah, it's also, uh, yeah, I think that was also, as I told a little bit about after Vancouver, that I was, I was also, I remember now when you talk about it, I was really eager to also, yeah, was m much more curious about other people and other persons. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be persons way out of sports. Um, it's um and i also i i um i remember i took much more time to different aspects in life and uh, not only sports and i think that also helped me grow as a person and then naturally also as an as an athlete mm. We have got a question here, uh, Nico and Akeda from Berge, if you would like to turn on the video and ask this question. We've been training the same way in Norway and Japan. I think so. We are quite a lot of learn from Norway, Norwegian training method. And yeah, we are following you. Always, but all we, the we don't have we don't have a original original one. No. Is it like you yeah. discuss things when you meet? Is it uh, when you meet in uh, one of the big uh, games? Do you discuss how you train? Do you look at each other? How you train, or is that a competition and nothing more? I think it's uh, overall it's maybe not that much discussed amongst athletes how you train but uh, like I think it's also if you ask and have a good relationship uh, I think me and Akito had talked about what we train maybe our whole career so it's I think it's all about the relations that you have Mm. with the different athletes i think uh, yeah so i think me and akito always have talked about it and i think also your coaches have talked a little bit uh, asked about yeah. it and i think it's um, and that's also what we try to do with this camp uh, trying to share the, the knowledge um, so yeah if you ask you get answers i think Akito, you, uh, yep. how do you find the positive things to focus on in periods where you have lack of motivation? Hmm. <laughs> po 
positive things. Uh, try to find out the positive things from everything. <laughs> yeah, just, just, I think it's just the mindset of oneself, you yourself. It's a, uh, yeah, it's depend, it's depend on you or depend on I, how, how I look the the things things to pos from positive side or or negative side just just depends on you and I want I try oh I always try to to find out the way from the positive side it's it's really easy to to see the things from negative side but it's it's sometimes it's quite hard to to see from the positive side like like uh, interval training if you it's it's quite hard to always uh, i don't want to do hard training it's uh, it's hard it's tough <laughs> but it's some some uh, there is uh, some positive side also but, and it's i i, I will always uh, try to find out to see from that that way that's yeah that's i think that's my answer <laughs> good answer yeah. and Jed, was, is asking um we can put yet on video maybe maybe Michael, so we can yeah. see Jed. see him as well yes yeah. i don't think you really want to see me but i can uh, i can do that uh, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, my question is, uh, you know, um, I think Japan and the United States have a similar issue in that we're, our athletes are having to spend so much time in Europe. And I'm just wondering uh, how you how you handle or how do you best uh, make the best of spending so much time away from home and in Europe? Mm. Yeah. I it's i think it's um i'm always it, it's kind of like uh, a positive thing it's uh, always try to uh to find find looking for some some uh side of the positive thinking and yeah, always taking some positive thing from the the traveling and um away from home it's it's quite easy for me for me and uh i don't know sometime i i'm missing home when i when i'm missing home i call my wife or my friend or my family but now i don't need so much when i was young I can enjoy more, more uh, my life in Europe. I don't know. Uh, it's not challenging for, challenging for me. Thank you. Is, is it okay? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we're starting to um, to become or to get to the end of this. Um, I would also like to say, like, um, um, what I think I talked a little bit about it now, but um, me kind of opening up to more um, than just sports uh, have made, for example, me and Akito to have a special relationship. Uh, I have visited Akito uh, in Japan, for example, uh, in 2014. Uh, spend uh, three nights at your parents' house in Hakuba. Uh, yeah, seeing your hometown, um, traveling to Hokkaido, skiing, um, which I think is um, it is definitely something that would not happen if it wasn't for sports. Mm. And uh, you and Yoshito coming to my place uh, every every Monday or Tuesday after the World Cup in Lillehammer. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really special and um, I cherish 
that a lot and I I, I really yeah I, I've I'm really glad that I have had the like the sporting career that I, I have had and I'm proud of my results but I'm I don't think about my results uh, now uh, being done with sports I think about all the good memories that I have and all the friendships that I have made all over the world I don't know if you want to add something to that, Takito. I agree with you. Um, I think uh, yeah, also the sports is not just uh, just the winning or just uh, having a good result. Mm. If uh, if you fighting with with uh, fairness and full of uh, respect with uh, other competitors, and then you can make after the race you can make a good friendship with mm. with other athletes and especially me and you me mm. and yeah it's the medal it, medal or some good result is uh not it's not big in my life and mm. yeah i think uh it's already things the past and yeah, what I told you yeah, yeah. today, and yeah, but our friendship or friendship with others, athletes or coaches are it's uh, it's kind of forever mm. until when I will die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. my. I think it's uh, how can I say treasure mm. of the sports. Yeah. Good words. And uh, I also want to add that uh, we are all different. So uh, I was watching the documentary about uh, Lance Armstrong the other day, where he was complaining that uh, cyclists has become too much friends now these days. Mm. They're not competitors anymore, they're friends. So he would probably maybe disagree with some of the <laughs> thoughts that me and you have. but. Uh, I think, as I said in the beginning, it's important to to be yourself and find your own way. And this is what we talked about today was my way and uh, is Akito's way of having a sports career. So I hope I hope you can get some tips or some reflection out of what we have talked about today. Great. Thank you, Mikko and Akito, especially to Akito here uh, during the night. So, pleasure that you found time to join us. Uh, it was and... fun. Thank you, too. <laughs> um, yeah, we are uh, getting close to an end, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I see also Taris here again. Thanks to all the speakers during this week. It's been amazing to hear your thoughts and all the effort you have put in the yeah making this camp so great so um we will um continue with the photo competition now um if you still follow us uh, mick i will show you the picture for today uh, the winning picture and i think it's cool to see like you can use also things in the nature when you are doing uh, workouts. You don't really need like uh, the special equipment. So this uh, picture is from Silva from Slovenia. So she's the winner of the photo competition today. A nice uh, photo there, I think. And uh, I also said yesterday that we were uh, going to announce the winner of the or the best week of uh, the best photo of this week um, we'll see if i can get it on the screen again here that's a girl from finland that will win a free spot for the camp uh, next year dram, 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 dram. This cool picture, I think it's illustrate this digital camp in a great way, doing the session in front of the computer, doing it uh, maybe alone, but still we are all together online, 
So Alva from Finland, welcome to the camp next year. You can just pay the travel costs and you will cover all the other costs in place here in uh, Lillehammer. So uh, yeah, that was the photo competition. Uh, and um, Linda, what do you think about this uh, this week? It's been a great week, I think. It's been uh, for the sessions I've followed. It's been uh, it's been really nice. I think uh, the, both the athletes and uh, and all the the ones who've been been with us and sharing knowledge has been really good. So um, I hope you all in, enjoyed it. And I think this last session with uh, Miko and uh, and Nikita was. Um, a really good way to finish up this uh, this camp and um, yeah I, I think it's important to remember that uh, we are in this together we are uh, building a new sport for uh, Nordic combined for women and um, we have to do it together together all the nations all the athletes all the coaches so um, it's the it's only when the bibs are on for the athletes that they are competitors in every other hour of the day we are friends and colleagues and, and sure. are going to make Nordic combine great for both girls and and boys so. I totally agree it's so, so cool to hear the presentation today and also from the legacy side we're so focusing on uh, yeah making friendships across nations so uh, Hopefully, finger crossed that we can get even yeah. closer next year for a physical camp. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we hope to invite you, you all uh, here uh, next year. And uh, I will also send you all uh, evaluation form later tonight. So we also want feedback from you, from all coaches and athletes, about how, how the camp was and if you have input for the further development of the camp. Mm. I'm not sure. If uh, it's Lasse here, I saw him earlier, would you like to see, say some final words, Lasse? From the yes. this side? Yeah. If you can still uh, hear me. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks uh, for uh, to everyone, first of all. Um, and also today, uh, thanks Akito for getting up in the middle of the night. Uh, to to join us, I think that's great. Uh, thanks, uh, Miko, and everyone else that has contributed. Um, I think it's been, uh, you know, it's it's a revolutionary camp for not only for Nordic Combined but for FIS. Um, had a meeting with Sara earlier today, and and she mentioned it's the first time we do something like this, uh, and this is uh, definitely. Um, one step, um, let's say, further on to the development, not only for for Nordic Combined, but also for for FIS and how we can actually do things. Uh, for sure, um, like uh, Peredic says, we hope to meet up uh, all together next year in Lillehammer. Uh, but for those who might not be able to, we can for sure offer uh, some kind of a solutions as well to to spread uh, the knowledge and uh, and. Um, you know the the information and the presentations and everything that it's in has been presented uh, these days. So um, fantastic! Uh, and thanks uh, thanks a lot to to Lillehammer Legacy, uh, Olympic Legacy for for arranging and everyone involved in this uh, with the Norwegian Ski Federation and Linda in the uh, in the front um, together with Miko and everyone involved. So. Hopefully it's been uh, good for all the athletes and coaches that has, uh, has followed and we definitely uh, are looking forward uh, to meet you all again as soon as uh, the winter starts uh, rolling in and we are getting ready for uh, competition season. So from from us, um, you know, thumbs up and um, like we say, tip top, thumb up. Um, very well done, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Lassen. Thanks again for great support from uh, FIS for this camp and also really nice to work with you and the Norwegian Ski Federation, Linda. So uh, looking forward to already now start the planning for our camp uh, next year. So uh, I think that's it for this year. Again, we have, uh, as you know, we are recorded all the sessions. So if you are getting bored later, <laughs> later uh, this winter, you can watch back to the sessions or uh, yeah, also the workouts, get some inspiration there. And hopefully see you see you next year. See you Bye. all.
Bye. Thank you very much.